Hi, welcome. Thank you to the um, for coming to this session. And what's been really fun about what we're doing today, these are all um, sessions we, we put together because of feedback um, from people of that's what they wanted to hear about. Um, I was actually driving back from um, I think of the event that we did at Birdsong, the summer intensive. And as I was driving through the um, back roads, I was trying to get to the Cobal Skill, I think. And um, I saw so many um, roadside stands of different sizes, so much various stuff happening that um, really started thinking in my head, so many have popped up that it's such a viable option for selling, especially if you're in a good place that we need to know more about it. So we're going to the expert today. So here, um, Kenyon Parsons. Hi, good morning, I'm Kenyon Parsons. And uh, with my wife, Carrie, who's doing the uh, IT for this, uh, we run Parsons Vegetable Stand in Sharon Springs on Route 20. Uh, here's a picture of the stand. Uh, this stand has been in place since 1993. We bought it used from a stand that was on Route 80 and Route 20 at the old Burger World, if anyone rides Route 20. Uh, so this stand has been around for a while. It uh, really needs a facelift, but I hate change. Um, the farm started out as a dairy farm. It's a third generation farm. My uh, sister started some vegetables in about 88. I uh, started to dabble in vegetables in 93. Uh, we start, took over, the cows left. Uh, so we have a pretty good infrastructure. There's huge driveway for tractor trailers. There's tons of room. And yet we interestingly have some interesting parking problems and things. It, and it's a different business from milking cows to selling vegetables on the road. Uh, we started out as every veg site stand. The empire began on a picnic table. My mom would sell sweet corn off the picnic table. And now 30 years later, uh, we're still selling it on the side of the road. It's the one form of marketing that really just appeals to me. Um, in the early 90s, my sister started with UPIC strawberries. And I could either milk in the morning or run the UPIC strawberries. And the thing that was so fun about that was at six o'clock in the morning, there were women at the house knocking on the door that wanted to pay for UPIC strawberries. And the fact that people would come to my house and give me money is just something I just could never get over. No other job seemed as rewarding. So 30 years later, we're still doing it. Um, the, the stand itself, Route 20 is a great road. Uh, it's a state highway. I have four lanes in front of me. There's a half mile of visibility each way. Uh, some people still don't see the stand, uh, but you couldn't ask for a better retail spot. And that's what saves me. Uh, I'm an okay farmer. we got a great road. Uh, we're right between Cooperstown and anything east. So that's a great target. Uh, there's a lot of road. There's a lot of uh, nursing homes and doctor's appointments and people are just riding 20 and they pull in a lot. Uh, and then that's really, really what makes selling this stuff fun. Um, here's a terrible picture of the stand. The, apparently they were about middle of April and we're trying with some, I don't know why there's only one pansy, one sunny smile and some rhubarb. Um, this isn't a normal display. Usually there's tons more on it. Um, one thing fun I wanted to say, cause I'm doing 2021 numbers. And the thing about 2020 that I think was so interesting is that road stands became popular again. Buying food from your local farmer was fun. And for, for lack of a better, for lack of better infrastructure, we were outside. So by just by being outside, it was, uh, I don't want to say it was safer, but there was a lot of protocol that just it was just easier. Um, my neighbor built a beautiful stand uh, but he was worried about traffic flow, just getting people in and out of the stand. And that's something we didn't really have to worry about. Um, next slide, please. Uh, two, please. Or first slide, please. Slide one. Sorry. 
So this is my, I'm going to tell you a lot of things about roadside stands that are kind of negative. Um, this is one of the most fun, positive ones. Uh, this is my friend, Lydia. She, uh, I'm not going to tell you that every time you come to the Barsons farm, there's going to be a harp uh, on some, but it happened once. I'm not saying it couldn't happen again. Uh, it's a really busy Sunday. Uh, Lydia happened to, she's been buying from me for 15 years and she was just offended that we had never heard her play. So she jacked her harp out of her car and uh, played some Beatles cover tunes. And uh, it was really fun because we were the only, for that five minutes, we were the only ones there. And uh, it was really, you know, it would have been really cool if you had a concert. It was really just so rewarding just to hear some great music at home. So this, this was a highlight. This was really fun. Really, really super nice. Uh, slide three, please. So the thing I, I think, back up one. Back up one, there we go. The thing that I think so fun about this business, it's all a series of Sophie's choices. Um, whatever you do, there are ramifications for your actions. And what we try to do and where we end up is, is never where you think. Um, the one thing I wanna stress is that you never know your crowd. You target a crowd. If you go to a market, let's say, let's say you have a high-end product. You go to a market in a high-end neighborhood and hopefully you do very well. I wish you all the best. I go to markets, but I'd say over half of our money comes from the roadside stand. With that, it's just my wife and I. So there's, we're always out of room. There's never enough time. And whatever we plan may crash and burn. Uh, so here's just a fun picture. So we put up a high tunnel a few years ago and we were uh, this is about three years old and we finally, we succeeded in some nice greens. But with the greens, I can't cut them and put them on the stand. They're gonna look like garbage in two minutes and I can't sit there all day to sell $20 worth of spinach. Thus, we started growing hanging baskets and more annuals, bedding plants to sell, to sell the greens. Well, in the picture on the, my right is the problem that we have is you have a high tunnel now that is full of greens. It's full out of hanging baskets. The temperature is gonna freeze, but to your left, you can see there's tomatoes that really need to go in. Um, all those things need to happen, but it might crash and burn at any minute. And that's, that's kind of the fun thing about this job. Um, where you go, what angles you head for, what's gonna happen. Um, one thing fun with the greens last year with COVID was that I really was a poo pooer of any box, not CSAs, but just a box, misfit vegetables for lack of a better thing. I just thought it was horrible. How are we, but how are we gonna sell stuff? So Carrie came up with, let's put it, put it out. We'll post it on the internet. Um, and we'll see what happens. And people came and we did a pickup on Saturdays at two o'clock and you could order your pound or two of spinach or whatever we had available. And uh, it, it worked and it was really fun. Uh, it was really quite safe. Everybody would line up and I would whip their boxes either in their trunk or in the passenger seat of their car. It was, it was really interesting. Just really rewarding to see people really appreciate where local food comes from. Uh, next one. Uh, if you're going to get them in, you might as well sell them. There's some lettuce that's getting picked. Uh, we started selling potting soil because people wanted it. You're pulling in a driveway. You have to sell them things. Uh, here I am selling mulch. Here's my dog, Violet. Uh, probably one of the best sales tools in the world. Uh, no one cares about vegetables. Everyone loves this dog, myself included. Um, but bark mulch, bark mulch during COVID, I didn't understand why I doubled my sales, but it's because everyone was home. So in 21, I thought, oh, sales are gonna try, triple or quadruple. Now everybody went back to work. Um, to the right is one of the most fun pictures. So I do a lot of dwarf sunflowers. Dwarf sunflowers start about the middle of April. 
Um, and I try to wrap them up by no later than the first of June. Um, it's a good income. It's a great product. It's quick. It grows. They're relatively cold hardy. They're pretty tough. They just hog greenhouse space. So do we want to grow peppers extra to sell? Or do you want to grow heirloom tomatoes to sell? Or we have to walk around these silly, sunny, or these dwarf sunflowers. Um, dwarf sunflowers, sadly, was one thing I couldn't sell on the road. They just would just get destroyed by the wind. Um, so we had to find other venues to sell them. We still grow them. We still grow too many of them. It's a bone of contention between my wife and I. Uh, I love sunny, I love dwarf sunflowers and geraniums. Um, big users of greenhouse space. Next one, please. So here's a picture of something I never thought I could sell. Um, anybody can sell tomatoes, easy breezy. Uh, yellow beets, I like a challenge. They're good. They're actually one of the better things that I sell. I love them. That, who cares what I love? It's what you love. You're the one buying it. So, but selling just tomatoes is really boring. It, it doesn't keep me, I, I, it's not as engagement. Um, so 21, for better or worse, was the year of the beet. Uh, I kind of just keep doubling down on how many beets I grow. And uh, so far we haven't hit demand yet. It's really, it's really interesting. And uh, just to toot my own horn, July, or July, January 2nd, 2022, picked a bushel of beets outside. We sold them the next day, which is really the only thing that matters. Um, also in that picture is a garlic scape. Again, I don't know what magic happened in 21. Garlic was, in, I've grown garlic for 30 years. I never had garlic so nice. Uh, the thing that is mildly hurts me inside is that, is any of this, can we do this again? <laughs> you know, is not, what this year's wonder is going to crash. 2020, I couldn't do wrong with pumpkins. Uh, 21 vine crops could not take three months of rain. They just suffered. And it was really hard to go from the easiest year pick and fall stuff to really one of the worst. Um, but that's the nature of the business. So what will be the magic of 22? Who knows? Um, we're still riding cabbage from 21. So, so far cabbage is saving the day. Uh, next one, please. Here's just a little picture of the stand. This is, uh, looks like toward the end of July. Um, I don't want to put out every single thing I own to sell. Uh, I don't want to put out 50 quarts of beans. They're just going to melt in the sun. Uh, I understand that this is, we're out in the sun and the wind, and this is a terrible place to put out broccoli. Beans dry out in seconds. But if I have a box, if there's a cooler full of broccoli, everybody who comes in, I'm going to ask, maybe into broccoli. Um, I love sales. I hate pitching. And I hate talking about the product. Is this the best corn in the world? No, but it's the best I could do. It's the best I could. It's what we did. Um, is each bite of everything I grow a taste sensation? Ah, we tried. Um, that said, everybody's going to get offered broccoli. Broccoli will be in every sentence if there's broccoli in the cooler. Um, I'll run to this cooler 40 times to get 40 quarts of beans, just so at least they look fresh. Um, and then in the fall, uh, just a fun fall picture. I don't know why we, that just shows, oh, this is the one for the whole season. I'm sorry. The, uh, so anyway, it doesn't look like the stand's got a lot going on. There's, there's more going on. It just gets filled all the time. Next, please. So one fun thing, if you can come to the stand, I want you to keep coming to this stand. I, I love new customers, but I want to mildly engage my customer base. And like I said, you don't know your crowd. So if you can get things that people want to try to do, and if you're excited about it, they're going to be excited about it. So maybe the beet maze isn't the most way to go, but we did a legit kind of claustrophobic corn maze this year over two acres. And uh, 
I'm not going to tell you it was our best money maker, but it was really fun. Um, and it took, I don't know, it took a couple of days. We didn't cut it until it was 12 feet tall, because why would you? Um, next year, we'll, we'll do better planning on that. That was just fun. It's fun to get. The longer people stay at your house, the more entertainment, the more, the more things there are to do, the more they're going to keep coming. Next, please. Merch. It's all about merch. Uh, if you see a million people walking around with your name on their shirts, that's really super fun. Uh, this is a pic. The bottom picture is a picture of the American Legion. Um, last May, it was COVID restrictions had just been released. And Sharon Usley had a garden party that we would do pretty well. We would sell a lot of bedding plants at, vegetable plants. Well, that was all canceled. We scheduled an event. We tried to keep it small, just just through COVID protocol. Um, there were some fun things. If you had a food truck, and that was a big draw. We had a taco truck. Well, then you had you couldn't have tables. You had to wipe them down. So, I, what if we get rid of the tables? That's fine, but you can't have people walk around. So, what if we just make a roped off area and we'll call it the taco pit of shame and we will just stand around it and judge you while you eat your tacos um who knew uh, it was a 35 to 39 degree day and raining and we had oh five six hundred people come uh, everybody shopped and we had 40 vendors uh, it was a really fun thing we just got a notice that a lady wants to come to this year's um it was really fun that it was everything was closed and then everything opened up. So no one was busy. So there was no planning. I called a friend of mine who's in a band. I'm like, you want to play? And he says, geez, we haven't played in a year. We'd love to play. Uh, you know, now you need to book those guys nine months ahead. So I don't know what we're going to do this year, but it was really fun. Super fun. Next one. There's a picture more of outstand, outstanding in the field. There I am on the right, outstanding in the field. That is the end of the day. That was at five o'clock. Uh, nobody got stuck except the fire truck. Um, one slop hole the next day. Uh, but the people came. And if your crowd comes, man, you really just got to thank them so much. Next one, please. Uh, here's Family Farm Day. This is the greatest form of advertising ever. Um, so I was, I get bitten once and I never look back. So 30 years ago, I did an advertisement for jam berries the first week of July, not understanding that the paper came out a week later. So I had all these people come and they wanted stuff that I didn't have anymore and they're hassling me about it because it was in the paper. So I never advertise in any publication again. Uh, that's really mature of me. That said, Family Farm Day every year, they promote your farm. You get people from all over. Uh, here we're, we're chucking corn right here. There's uh, we made up some. We hung some baskets from a rack, and if you get the corn in the basket, you may win, may or may not win a prize. Uh, one of the prizes was you had to say something nice to one of the other vendors that I had at that event. Um, after the fourth person told Denise she had a nice shirt, she knew that it, something was up. Next one, please. Uh, so corn's where it's at. I don't grow super sweets. I don't want you to take your corn and put it in the fridge and come back five days later and have it still taste good. Uh, if it would blow up in your fridge the next day, I'd be cool with that. I want you to come back. Don't buy two dozen if you're only going to eat three. Um, I'm not going to tell you that quality is awesome. I'm just going to tell you that just keep it fresh. Uh, last year, there wasn't the, the canners kind of slowed down a little bit. Everybody kind of went overboard in 20. Um, but 21 was, a, was an exceptional corn year. Uh, here's some just some other value added products. Some friends of mine make mobile muesli. We sell that on a stand. Another friend of mine down the road makes maple syrup and honey. Uh, next, please. So 
on the right there is the tomatoes with the flowers. Uh, one thing my wife and I do, which is really healthy in relationship, is something called bouquet wars. Uh, we'll go cut five, 10 bouquets. Each of us cut our, and we both have our own technique, our own style. And then we put them on the stand and we see who sells first to give you more self-worth and more self-esteem. And if you didn't sell, well, then you must reap the whirlwind. Um, now, the thing that a roadside stand does that is a really hard time with is that there's peaches there in the left. I don't grow peaches. I'm not from Pennsylvania. I don't have Pennsylvania. I, these are Pennsylvania peaches. They're great. They do a great job. I could never do that great a job with New York peaches where I live. That said, people come to your stand and they want you to have everything. Kenyon, I need a carrot. I don't have carrots right this second. Yeah, but I'm making a stew. Well, that's super. But I, you still need a carrot. So there's, I'm only going to sell what I grow. Ah, you quickly put yourself out of business. Um, people want everything. They're used to the grocery store. Uh, we sell yogurt, we sell butter, we sell um, eggs, we sell a, a bunch of other things. The, uh, and if I don't have it, then you're just going to keep shopping. You're going to go somewhere else. Uh, you'll give me a couple of tries. We're only going to talk about tomatoes, these poor eggplant. No one ever wants to talk about eggplant. So I want to give eggplant their due. <laughs> So here's to, here's to you, eggplant. Next one, please. Hold on, let me get caught up. Um, do two acres of cut flowers. And the one thing I'll tell you right off the bat is that we used to do make your own uh, buckets. We cut a bunch of loose zinnias, throw them in a bucket. You can make your own bouquet. That's just a great way to kill flowers. Uh, I don't know what happens. These little frail customers have G.I. Joe Kung Fu grips. Uh, they destroy flowers. So now we rubber band our bouquets together. Uh, here's one to write down, folks. There's Soraya in front of you. Um, that is the that is one of the many sunflowers you have to grow. Um, it's it's like a rock. Don't you can't put in too many plantings. Uh, five would be cool, six would be better. Um, you get a nice center stem. And you get some really nice branches too. So put, put Soraya on your list. Uh, and another one to write down, I grow about 3,000 clads. That's just where I started with flowers. I just love them, they're giant. Uh, I have a great uncle that he made a bunch of money growing clads 30, 50 years ago. So maybe there's some familial uh, love of clads, I don't know. But of the years growing clads, one year they started to cup and look kind of burnt. And I don't know, it probably took three years to understand that we were getting pounded by thrips. So Google the math, a little bit of Lysol, soak them for six hours before, you'll kill all the thrips. Now thrips aren't a problem anymore. Um, I will tell you that the clouds that went in the mid-June this year did not like all the rain, um, but clouds are where it's at. I love them. Next one, please. Here's some snaps. Uh, here's some different sunflowers that we grew. Reds always are a disappointment. They're beautiful. They shed petals immediately. Um, here's another one. If you grow any tithonia, Mexican sunflowers, please cut all the first blooms off. Just throw them away. The second round has tough stems. They're longer. They'll last. They won't droop. Uh, you have this giant plant with a million flowers and all the first ones are drooping. And I'm like, this is junk. Wow, we were just doing it wrong. Um, here's a picture. This has got to be mid-July on the right the, with a row of snaps that I just love. And on the left, you can see a bunch of Lizzie's that are, Lizzie Anthus that are just coming on. Um, one thing fun about these flowers. So how do you do weed control? These are all on plastic and Everything was at 18 inches. Uh, Lizzie's at 18 inches. It's just way too much room. Tighten them up, get them down to six or eight, or I can go tighter than that if I could. Uh, but we do everything with a water water wheel transplanter. So that's what worked, what's easier. You know what I mean? You can reinvent the wheel every time, but 
sometimes you're like, hey, we got three hours to bang these plants out. Do what you got to do. Uh, next one, please. Uh, so if you come buy a bouquet from me at the stand, you'll notice it's not wrapped. Uh, that's wrapped. This one that's wrapped right here, this is wholesale. Uh, wholesale, I can spend get a little more money for it, and I have to treat them a little bit better. Um, flowers on the stand, I'm going to sell you flowers like I pick corn. If it's ready, I'm going to cut it. Uh, it'll last a week without me doing anything. The, uh, and here's the fun, I'm not gonna say that, that you pick pumpkins, all the parks and all the pumpkins say Parsons Farm, but there was one that was. Next, please. So here's a picture of me doing my job. You got a fluff. We could never just keep, this is the one drawback of a roadside stand. At a market, you set up, you do your best, you close it down, you pack it up, you throw away what's what's bad and you wait for the next market day. Well, tomorrow's the next market day. This is a market day that never ends. So every day you got to go through everything, throw the junk out. Why yeah. aren't we selling peppers? Well, maybe because you left a funky one on top. You know, every day you have to go through, you can't go through it too much. <laughs> Next one. So sometimes things, you did your best job fluffing and why are cabbage selling? Well, there might be because there's a giant spider that lives above the cabbage. Um, all I know is that these cucumbers were very alarmed. Next one. So, Display, display, display. Make your display as inviting as you can. Uh, there's a late fall, early fall, and then there's a later fall picture. Um, so just make it as inviting as you can. And it's terrible. This is how we do flowers is terrible. Flowers are in the sun. Uh, we're chasing the shade of the tree. If I put them in the shade, nobody sees them. Uh, we're all trained to only buy what's right in front of us. And that is maddening because sometimes logistic, just plant health, you can't have it like that. Next one. Oh, there's just more display pictures. A little more merch. Uh, start, we targeted merch uh, for baby clothes. That was really fun. And uh, the more white pumpkins you put out, the more pumpkins you're going to sell, period. There, that's my tip on pumpkins. Uh, you got to know your crowd. This is my crowd. This is my niece and nephew. Um, we're promoting at a farmer's market. Uh, my niece, Rebecca, she's the, uh, could sell candy onions to anyone. Next one, please. Uh, there I am. I'm speaking at the uh, Harvest Festival and Sharon on winter vegetable storage, which is always riveting. And we had quite a crowd for that. Next one. Um, this is family farm day on the left. Violet's doing her job. And so some Sundays too, as I've started to invite different vendors to come just to have not necessarily a farmer's market, but Sunday's my big day. So the cookie lady comes and I spur some free cookies. It's a good deal. Um, farmer's market, all you're doing is promoting yourself. So here's I am at the Cobusco farmer's market. That's a great market. We do quite well there. That said, I don't, I want you to, it's only one day a week. Surely you're going to eat more vegetables than one day a week. So the whole point of all of this is to get you to come to the stand. You're networking all the time, always. Next one. There's a farmer's market in Albany on uh, Central Lab. Uh, if, you can get the, if you can get kids to dig vegetables, uh, you've done good work. And they're going to keep coming. Uh, we sold, uh, oh, keep going, keep going, Karen. So the picture on the left, this is the greatest thing that I've purchased in my life farming. This was a uh, scene, a, a prop for a school play. We happened to drive by a friend of mine's garage. He's a cabinet maker. And this was for the cave of uh, Aladdin's cave. Um, we made it the entrance to the corn, the hay maze. Uh, every little kid sees it. 
every little kid's really fun about jumping through the mouth. It's really, it's, it's great. I try to keep it, I mean, put it away for the winter, but uh, it's a really fun focal point because what is this bizarre thing in the dry, in, in your barn doorway? What do you, what's in that mouth? Um, when we had outstanding in the field, uh, that was the backdrop behind the band and uh, we had a tie dye mask on the face. So it was great. Um, the cow in the middle, that's the cutest cow in the world. That's my gal, Carrie. Next one. So you can sell pumpkins on the road and a great way to sell pumpkins is to decorate other places with your pumpkins. Hey, that's really cute. Where'd you get that? I got that from Kenyon and Carrie. Um, so we do a bunch of businesses. Here's a Stewart's and Cobeskill. Here's the Cobbler and Company downtown in Sharon. Um, I do a blank. I say, what's your budget? All this is based on, I'm not going to itemize. I know what stuff costs, but if you wanted a minimum of $50 hit, I think we did a couple uh, of $100 hits and uh, we did three for three governors. We did the governor's mansion. So that was our uh, big, big excitement. Here we do decorating for Christmas, kissing bottles and a Christmas tree and some more Harvest Festival pumpkins. So here we are on our way to farm to school. We're selling a bunch of lettuce to farm to school. Uh, again, just get your name out there. You can put an ad in, in the buy shopper or you can tell the lunch lady you got nice lettuce and she's got a big mouth and she's gonna tell everybody you got nice lettuce. Um, Word of mouth is the best advertising. You keep in people's head. The um, I can only say uh, I can't say enough good things about it. All right, this is my favorite time of year when the sumacs are blooming. Uh, this is what happens when the, <laughs> the greenhouses are full, the tomatoes are planted, hanging baskets got to go somewhere. Um, we can't put everything out front because we're gonna be spend all day dragging a hose all over the farm. So a lot of this is self-serve. Um, so you gotta know to come out back and grab your hanging basket off the sumac bush. Uh, and that's a real challenge. Uh, and visibility, like I said, product placement. Here's a thousand glads that's being blocked with violet. That's being blocked by one row of sunflowers. I never thought that was gonna hold people up. You don't have any mums this year? Yeah, there's a million of them. Oh, I didn't see them. I, I, it's fascinating. It's fascinating. The things you never thought would be a problem, that's what gets hung up on. And it's never what you think it's going to be. Next one. Uh, so you put spaghetti squash in a watermelon bin because that's what you have. I thought it would be really fun to line the entire driveway with bins of squash. It was great, look cute. Till I get asked, how much of the watermelon? And I'm like, but, but, they're, but they're not watermelon, they're spaghetti squash. Surely you can see that. Yeah, but the box says watermelon. It's with a funny guy saying everything's a watermelon. Um, again, things, I, I, I didn't think that was gonna be an issue. Uh, there's more Soraya, shout out to Soraya. Next one. Uh, Got a lawn full of Christmas trees, full, all set up, decorated, but you don't have a sign. I thought the trees would speak for themselves, but enough people complained, so we put up a sign. Um, and the tomato was all seen. <laughs> so we have great plans, we have great ideas. Nature doesn't care. So here's a four o'clock blooming at 9.50. So what's that mean? How, did, how that's not helping me? Next one. It's never what you think is going to happen. So now you got to stand. Now it's winter. Actually, it's November. It's starting to freeze. So now we moved everything in the barn. Um, I still have cabbage. How am I going to sell this cabbage? I can't put anything out on the road. So the thing that one of the fun things about it is this even this time of year, you pull in because you want a potato or an acorn squash or a cabbage. By the time I get my boots on and run out, you're pulling away saying, and they're saying, 
Oh, he must have gone for vacay for the year. Uh, the worst mistake I ever did was close the doors of the barn. Everybody thought I moved away. Uh, again, marketing marketing failures. Uh, so now I have people, I've trained them to come in, but now they park at the stand, but now all the stuff is in the house or it's all gonna freeze. So he's shouting from the front door across the lawn to try to sell a head of cabbage. It's really fascinating. Uh, sometimes you really regret what you wish for, you know? Go ahead, Kim. Uh, here's the flowers. So how do you do weed control and flowers? They're all in black plastic, so that's nice. How are we gonna do the row middles? Well, I used to cultivate them because I cultivate everything. Well, all that does in my soil, which is pretty heavy, <laughs> evidenced by the pooling of water on the right, is make with cultivation, you make ankle breaking ruts. So, hey, general public, go out in my field and twist an ankle. Oh, this is muddy. I don't like this. I like no part of this. So I bought a cool weed whacker and I pay a kid three days a week to come just mowing between the flowers. Um, and it seems to work. Uh, this year, we're going to take a bunch of pump, dead pumpkin bins and line them up. Uh, put the cardboard down in a row middle. And at least I have a road up through the middle of the flowers, that might work. Uh, if we get real fancy, I might throw a bucket or two of black mulch on top of it. I doubt it. I think you're gonna be walking on pumpkin bins. Uh, like I said, it's Kiss Carrie and I. So we want you to do more of the work. Um, here's a bunch of flowers going for resale. This is a good flower war about to happen. Uh, notice mine are prominently, I'll chase you down with my flowers. Uh, one fun thing, so I'm really good at like Russian May Day uh, military parade bouquets, white zinnias, uh, red zinnias, white lizzies, red zinnias, maybe some purple millet, uh, really masculine. So Carrie says, hey, uh, I got to make four bouquets. Could you cut a couple quick while I was watching this stand? Well, then I decided to go all artistic. Uh, took about an extra 20 minutes or half an hour to make one lousy bouquet because I was thinking outside the box. So sometimes stick with what you know. Go ahead, Ken. Uh, so for box pickup, here's the van all full of boxes in the shade. And for the summer solstice last year, if you came to pick up your box, if you wanted one, you had a, a gin and tonic for the road. Um, we all socially distanced and had gin and tonics. And, uh, one of the greatest marketing ever. Uh, it's not always about the money. Sometimes just having a drink with your friends is fun too. Uh, here's a band, truckload of stuff, mums and mini pumpkins and pumpkins going to a wholesale order. Uh, that was, it's a great order. The whole goal is to get that crowd to come to my house. If we can do that, then we really accomplish something. Go ahead. Uh, here's so speaking at last year's crack meeting uh put your name out there get your word out Sharon springs represented <laughs> uh here's flower tip grow lizzie's you can't go wrong my favorite lizzie's favorite variety lizzie's um july 15th to uh, i think we crashed around the 20th or so of october um, I don't really worry about cut flowers so much into October because I want to sell you pumpkins and mums. Um, but all Lizzie's are great. They're, they're one of my favorites. You go Lizzie's glad zinnias, you're going to go far. Um, the one thing about a roadside stand is that you don't get to leave. You're not going to leave in August to go to camp. That's when the money month is. So maybe you get used to camping out at home. Uh, you got to be cool with that. And we're open from April 15th till still open. Um, we try to run the stand from July, 1st of July to Columbus Day with somebody watching the stand all the time. Um, that's usually me from let's say 11 o'clock till seven. Uh, I used to quit at eight, but I, I'm getting older and I don't, I get a little more jaded. Uh, <laughs> uh, the stand is self-serve the rest of the time. The only thing I will ever complain about self-serve is that you can't make change. People are really don't want to make change. Uh, 
I wish I had a picture of it. I just have a mason jar. You put the money in a mason jar. Uh, to make sure you saw the mason jar, I had a sign, that arrows pointing, it said mason jar. So what people would do is roll up their money and put it through the hole in the box that just led to the rest of the world. So there's just money just like floating around in space. So, and then they don't want to put money in to hide it. So they don't want anybody else to take their money. So sometimes it's a real scavenger hunt on where, where you find money. It's like, this is the group. It's like finding Easter eggs. Uh, I don't have cameras because if you came and took something, uh, sometimes I go to grocery store in May and they're like, oh, hey, there's Parsons. Here's that money. I bought 20 bucks worth of potatoes out here. Here's your money. Uh, one thing we do too is I make about 100 acres of hay. Uh, fun thing about hay and vegetables is that there's no fun. They just conflict with each other. They're horrible. So this is some second cutting in October. Um, I have to run away from the stand because hay is really time sensitive. And you can't, you can get trapped at the stand. Some people just want to come in and say, hi, hey, how are you? Uh, you can't blow them off. They're your crowd. They want, and what I've done, which is awesome and horrible at the same time. So if I sit at the stand all day, I don't want to talk about vegetables, mostly. Maybe maybe, maybe I do want to talk about vegetables, but I'll, I want you to tell me something about your day. Entertain me. Tell me something funny. I say that to everyone. I didn't know I get people complexes about it because they don't have anything funny and it turns on them. Um, I want to talk briefly at this point about signage. So we put up a giant sign next to where the Parson sign was in front of the stand. Hey, we're doing hay today. Please pull ahead to clear the driveway. The lady parks in front of the sign, blocks the driveway when I'm coming in with a load of hay, looks at the tractor coming in, and then turns around and reads the sign. No one reads signs. People that read signs don't need to read signs. That's my thing on signs. We had a thing, stand rules. I don't know what happened. The lady thought it was French. Um, it's really, it's really fun and how you think you're reaching your crowd and versus how you're actually reaching them. Uh, you think you got it going on and you're totally missing it. And it's just really interesting. We all, you have two minutes from when they get out of the car to get some sort of relationship of why they're there. Some people just stop because they just want to stop. They want to stretch their legs. Um, then they, you know, they came, they came for a carrot. But, but I don't have carrots today. But I, I, I'm making stew, Ken. Where is this carrot? I already told you this once. Go ahead. Um, there's Soraya again. I said that a lot. There's my gal with Soraya. Uh, here's a friend of mine. He's made some uh, horseshoe art, horseshoe uh, various things. Support your friends. They got a product. Maybe you can sell them. So there's another black cat. There's another business in town. We're selling some of his stuff. Uh, my, my favorite picture in the world. If you're not excited to sell, no one's going to buy you stuff. Uh, so maybe I'm a little over the top here with Brussels sprouts, but ah, anything you can pick in November, I'm cool with. That's just fun. The party doesn't have to stop. Um, I think at this point, I actually made the people come and pick Brussels sprouts with me. Um, it takes a lot of pressure off when they are doing the work. Um, a pumpkin at my stand, a pumpkin wholesale has got to have a perfect stem. A pumpkin on the stand has got to have a pretty good stem. A pumpkin in you pick doesn't even have to have a stem. I don't understand any of it. Uh, one of my favorite stories is a lady came for tomatoes for canning. I want to can tomatoes. Great. How many bushes you want? Five. Great. Give me a couple hours. I'll bang them out for you. But I don't have time. Um, Sorry. Why don't you have time? Well, we're canning tomatoes. I'm the one getting the tomatoes. So you don't have any tomatoes and you're going to can these mythical tomatoes and it's all on me to pick these tomatoes for you. Well, I guess. I said, great. Come with me. You can help me pick them. And that's what we did. Uh, next one, please. 
So, as I say, I lined the driveway with boxes, produce boxes. It didn't work. So now we do minis, carry decorates all fall from September 1st to November 1st. Just keep putting out boxes and bushels and bins and stuff and decorating with it. No one will take from a box. They'll always take from the display because they already know what it looks like. It's really interesting. Um, we had to fill this up about every three days. It's really fun. Excellent. More sunny smiles, or these are these. I think these were sunny smiles. Don't grow sunny smiles. That's my dwarf tip. There are much better dwarfs out there. Uh, so this is this is the easy time. Fall light, September to early October light till Columbus Day. Anyway, you can sell anything. Everything looks beautifully. It, it, you, you, it just it's perfect. Um, that said, people still drive this. I I didn't know you were open. Um, I can't have a louder display than that. Uh, next one. Oh, and there's a picture of large March. Uh, so we do about five acres of pumpkins and winter squash. And then I do a half acre, of you pick pumpkins. Um, if you want a small basketball sized pumpkin, just get one off the lawn, or you can go in the field and get a 60 pounder. Uh, and that's really fun. A lot of people are a little intimidated by big ones, but now I've got a huge crowd on the hook for big ones. So now every year I got to grow at least a half an acre. I might even bump that up to an acre of big ones. Uh, here's Violet trying to sell a pumpkin. Violet's got to get her numbers up. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, here's some more minis that got to get that are going to get swiped up in about two seconds. So another fun one. Here is a display that is in the way. I hate everything about this display. It's right where everyone's walking to the stand. If you're going to buy corn, you have to walk around this display. There's nothing good about this, but it's so in your face. Uh, two days later, that old pile was all gone. Uh, again, what you tried, what you think is going to work and what works is, is just really, it's just a total crapshoot. So it's fun. You can think outside the box. Try new things. Try different things. Next one. Uh, Here's just a great picture. Why is it great? It is planting garlic on the last nice day of the year where we got it in. It was meant to rain for three more days and then it was over. Um, I hope this garlic is as awesome as 21. So good luck, guys. And here's a picture of Carrie on Halloween with sweet corn. Um, as we finished with a white last year and it was really fun. Um, like I said, Anybody can buy a tomato in August. The real, if you're, when your crowd comes out because you've got an exceptional product and they'll drive for it. So there's a real corn crowd and they're not buying it for a barbecue. They're buying it because they love it. And when you pull corn out on Halloween, that's, that was a real big deal. Uh, people, really, people really responded to that. It was really fun. It's latest ever. Next one. Uh, I have a friend of mine, again, he makes art. You know, he sells some frogs and some owls. It's just fun. Support your friends. Uh, here is a non-Soraya picture. This is Goldie. Who knew? I found a lot of another sunflower that I love. Uh, and uh, here's me in the eye tunnel. Looks like I'm planting tomatoes, picking greens. And I don't know why there's a bunch of annual plants in the way, but there's always something in the way. Uh, so just just keep you got to keep having more and more stuff that's what we've learned uh if you're on the road you got to keep coming you can't just have a good weekend uh so this was kind of a silly thing here's me and my gal we're uh selling christmas trees now i didn't want to sell christmas trees i buy christmas trees to resell uh but I would never, I have all these Brussels sprouts and cabbage and all that junk in the barn. Um, how am I gonna sell it? I can't stand out and just hope that you pull in. Why would you pull in? There's nothing on the stand. So about 10 years ago, I started selling Christmas trees as a way to make myself stay home, stay close to the stand. And then I could maybe sell you a Brussels sprout or maybe you don't want a Christmas tree, but you still want winter squash. But I have to stay, stay at the stand because I have to sell these Christmas trees. So it's a weird way to do things, but uh, it works. Uh, like us on Parsons and Facebook, uh, Parsons Vegetable Farm. And uh, 
Take a ride on Route 20. Come see us. Love to see you. You might have to do some work, but whatever. Nice. You got it. Wonderful. Okay. Ten minutes for questions. All right. Excellent. Yes. And we've got quite a few. Um, first one up that I can see is what type of cooler do you have for your produce? And how do you recommend sizing a cooler if you're selling at a roadside stand? They want to know about a cooler. Uh, we bought a cooler. We found a cooler out of an old pizza joint and uh, they were going out of business and we lucked out. Um, I'm going to put a cool bot up this year and I was going to put it in the barn. I think I'm going to put it in the cellar. Um, just, I was more worried about the summer, but there's enough fall stuff left to keep that I kind of want to tuck it away in my cellar. Uh, but a cool bot, two inch styrofoam and away you go. How do you know about sizing it? Whatever size cooler you put up is too small. Uh, I'll tell you that right from the get go. Um, it, it's got a, whatever, whatever greenhouse you put up, whatever thing you think you're going to do, you're over, you're undersized uh, if it takes off. Uh, I'm not going to tell you to go buy the biggest cooler ever, but don't think small. Think, think, think in expansion. That's all. And uh, where do you get your shirts and merch printed? Where do you get your merch? Local. Uh, local. I have one girl that uh, I don't know how she does it, but she makes up the cozies and uh, t-shirts, uh, Vistaprint. Um, wherever. Wherever. Wherever you, you you print something, you show it to me. Price is cool. I'll try to sell it. And we're not, I don't want you to think that we have like a, a birch line. If you come to the stand, there's a whole line of sh shirts and clothing to pick from. Um, we were able to do it as if you want a contest, you can get a shirt. Um, for outstanding in the field, we threw a lot of it around just to thank everybody for coming. But it's fun. So it's really, you see your name out. Like my one friend's like, I don't need any more shirts. I have seven Parsons Farm shirts. I don't want any more. <laughs> what up? Okay. And uh, the question was asked, will we get copies of the transcripts PowerPoint? Absolutely. In fact, um, it'll, you'll need to give us a few days, but we'll get that up on our website where you registered. Correct, uh, Corinne? Yes, we'll get it up there. Super. Okay. I'm scrolling right along. Um, Okay, Cicada asks, how do you market your farm stand other than going to farmer's markets, other than word of mouth? Do you use social media? Uh, yeah, we use Facebook. Facebook's fun. Facebook's fun. You put, you get a lot of likes. Um, it took a long time to try to get Facebook to turn into money, though. Uh, what's fun, we put a picture of Violet on and get 400 likes, uh, but nobody bought anything. You know, so it's really hard to translate that, but really it's just information. So here's like we're selling trees. Maybe you're not going to buy a tree today, but hello, those goons are selling trees. So that's how we do it. Um, I sell it. So I sell at home. We sell a little bit wholesale. Uh, before pre COVID, we had a couple of restaurants that we would sell fancy vegetables to. Um, COVID kind of killed that. Uh, so now it's just, Couple good wholesale accounts, the road, and the farmers markets. And uh, about how many bed feet of flowers do you have? Uh, percentage of you pick flowers versus bouquets from stand versus wholesale? Ah, uh, wholesale. There's uh, there's two acres total, so there's ten rows, five hundred feet long, um, plus. I did two thousand zinnia this year. By at least 2,000 zinnias, 3,000 glads, 3,000 lizzies. Um, Sounds like a lot, but it's not really. Right. It's totally doable. And what, what's fun, like, I love asters. Asters are terrible in our soil. So this year, they fought the fight until for a really long time. I was so proud. I'm like, dude, these are going to be the first to die. And Giant Ray rode it out for a long time until they too succumb. Um, one of the more bigger challenges we have is how to lay the cup, you cut flower field out. Um, I used to do everything in rows because I'm, I'm, I'm a commodity agriculture guy. But when you have one row of all purple zinnia and, and you don't want any more purple zinnia in this bouquet, but you're trapped in this row, it's just a horrible experience. So now Carrie, as Carrie rides a transplanter, she mixes up everything. And uh, that seems to work pretty good. 
and there's a lot of thank yous coming through. Uh, Cadence says, you're the man, Ken, thank you. And, <laughs> thank you much. Uh, Matthew Thomas says, thank you. And um, okay, Miranda asks, uh, when you say watch the stand, does that mean from a distance or do you find people want you to greet them each time? Are well, there if it came today, I would be peering out my kitchen window, even though it's January and I don't want to look out the window anymore. Uh, it's, I'm, I'm conditioned now to stare out the window all the time. Uh, no, when I say watch the stand, I'm going to go wait on you. So when I had to make hay, I couldn't wait on people. And that killed me. Uh, it killed sales too. Because uh, people come and they want, they want attention. It's not, yes, they want the product, but they want, they, maybe they got something funny they want to tell you. Um, they also won't make change. So, and everybody's got hundred dollar bills and I don't understand why you would come to a roadside stand and be like, I only got hundreds. How rich are you? Um, <laughs> these are just fun, just, just silly things. Like I don't, I don't want any of this to seem negative. It's just, it's really fun. The road is a really fun place to sell stuff. And it's different from a market because at a market they came there to shop. This guy was driving by. What's going on here? Well, to see if they're just nosy, if nothing else. Super. And then uh, more thank yous coming through. And it looks like that's it for questions. Um, and Corinne did uh, drop the survey link in the chat box. And we would very much appreciate your feedback. Um, yeah, so we're looking like we're at 11.56 now. We're going to give everyone a break for lunch, and uh, we'll join back up at 1 o'clock for Soil Health. Uh, any other comments, uh, questions, folks? All righty. Well, let's uh, give Kenyon, Carrie, and Betsy a big hand for this morning's programming. We really appreciate it. Thank and you so much. Thanks for having us. Thank you. All righty, we will see you later. Oh, there you go.